The Porsche Taycan can generate a massive 265 kilowatts of energy on regen braking, which is a lot of power. To put that into perspective, it could probably power the average family home for over two weeks, but the problem is it doesn't generate that kind of power for long. We're talking seconds as you come to a stop from a, and it has to be a significant speed, that mass of the Porsche Taycan, all that weight really helping the regen cause there. The more power you're putting into that stop, the more energy you're going to be regenerating, the more you're going to be able to recuperate. But the battery itself is only 93 kilowatts, so there's only so far you can go. The theory is that if you're rolling down a hill for long enough, under regen braking, you should be able to generate your own power and even charge the battery. That's what we're going to be trying out in this video. But how does it work? Well, an electric motor, when you throw power at it, it generates current and that will drive the motor forward. It'll cause it to spin round. And that's exactly the premise. Very simple, which is why these things are so easy to maintain from that perspective. It's just a spinning motor, a magnet and coils. When you take that current away and the motor is still spinning, it acts as a generator, a dynamo, if you like. It's basically how all our power is generated. Huge motor type things that spin around and thus create power. And it's no different for this, just on a slightly smaller scale. So we should be able to capture that energy and get it into the battery. But how are we really going to measure this? Well, I'm taking it very easy. I'm no, no science is really involved here. I'm going to take it to the top of a hill, a hill nearby called Leith Hill, and I'm going to drive down a road and I'll be regen because obviously I've got to watch my speed going down the road. Uh, so I'll be holding a consistent speed and it should be, in effect, charging the battery. But how am I going to really check that it's charged the battery? Well, I'm going to have to use some of the, the readouts, some of the meters that I have access to on the car. There's going to be no taking this thing apart and looking at the actual charge. I'd be very surprised in doing this if we can get the battery percentage up. It's not a huge, like, about 1.6 kilometers on the way down, which is a mile, not far, right? So I'd be very surprised if we can actually get that battery percentage up, but we can look at the, uh, the consumption and see what we're getting there. And we can also look at the miles. We might get a consistent, if not uh, hold out of the miles or, or an, even an increase. So I'll have to wait and see how that looks. But this is going to be a very unscientific experiment. But just to kind of look at the theory, can you actually recharge? Can you recharge a battery, an EV battery, just by going down a hill? Let's have a look. Right, here we are, top of Leith Hill. We're going to drive down Cold Harbour Lane and see how we go. I've got the camera on the consumption meter. Now I've reset the consumption meter so it's zeroed out. Uh, there is probably going to be a little bit of up before we go down. If we get to a significant up I will reset it and see how we go there. Uh, but this is going to be interesting. Right now it says I'm using juice according to the batteryometer. It is a batteryometer right? I think that's the uh, technical term for this. So let's see how we get on. Still going uphill actually, so uh, yeah, I might uh, just clip forward to the bit where we're going downhill and reset the tripometer again. Okay, so we're at the top of Leith Hill. We're now heading down Cold Harbour Lane, which is about 1.6 kilometres, I think, and it, it's looking pretty steep. Uh, so I've reset the trip meter here, so we're showing currently dash, 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 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. I normally get about 47. 45 to 47, maybe a bit high during winter. Of course, it's a fun car and you do want to open it up a little bit. Uh, but so far, uh, this bit is pretty much down here. Now, there's probably going to be a few uphill bits as well. So maybe at some point we'll need to find a better spot to try this, but it's pretty limited around here. In the UK, there is no such thing as a mountain. It's just big hills, really. So, uh, oh, we've got a we had a, oh, We had a minus on the consumption there. Can you believe it? But we've gone uphill and it's gone away. So we had a minus on the consumption. So I've never ever seen that before. Uh, when we get to this next peak here, let me just crack on and 
reset that. Oh, we still there's another down and up bit. Let's hope we can find some significant straight down bits and then start that again. Because yes, this is technically free energy if we can get to a bit that is consistently downhill. Cold Harbour, here we go. Um, I did look at this on the map and it should be pretty much downhill all the way. So, all right, so we're at the top of a pretty steep descent here. I will reset the trip meter, reset since, and let's see how we go. Let's see if we can get that kilowatt hour per 100 miles negative again, which effectively means free energy. And the regen is actually getting juice back into the battery, which is pretty cool. I'm getting a little bit of speed. I've got to watch this is a 30 mile an hour limit. Well, what you really want to do is get more speed up so you can use more of that regen. But this is looking pretty consistent in terms of the descent here, which is good. And there we go, minus, minus 29, minus 28, minus 30 kilowatt hour per 100, which is pretty good. So, that is energy that is going back into the battery that we're not expending. So effectively we're charging the battery here. Now I've not seen the miles go up anymore unfortunately and I've not seen the battery percentage go up. To get the battery percentage to go up you'd be probably having to pump significant regen into it for a long time and that's a big descent. A little anecdote, I was reading an article online and there was a guy who had to do 20 miles down about 1300 feet which is probably about 400 meters or so of a descent every day and when he got to the bottom his mileage had increased after 20 miles so he'd actually put miles onto the car the battery percentage though never went up and that was in one of those brands beginning with a T but yeah we are still going downhill here quite a bit and that negative readout is still present on the car which is really interesting more descent coming up here. So you can actually put juice into the car by going down a hill. It's proven, we can see that actually happening there. Now this isn't a big hill, it's, just, it's the UK, but that is very interesting to see that. I'm quite surprised. I thought it would just hit out at zero there and hang around or, or stay at dashes but it has it's actually gone to a negative value so we're genuinely putting juice back into the car but is it practical of course it's not practical for this to be viable in any way shape or form you would need to live at the top of a hill and then have a new car delivered to you every day so you could take it down the hill get your free energy and sell it at the bottom of the hill only to repeat the process of course there's no such thing as free energy. To get to the top of the hill then we had to expend energy to get there. Much more energy than we're putting back in now, I can assure you. But the Taycan does get about 30% of its energy back through regen, so it's pretty good in that respect. Okay, so let's explain it here for the benefit of the video. That little meter that we were looking at, kilowatt hours per 100 miles, is how much energy you are using per 100 miles. And normally for me that is a positive value probably sits between about 40 to maybe 50 and I've had it up way higher when you're doing very spirited driving. I think going around Silverstone we had that up way above 100 at one point I want to say but effectively getting places uses energy. There is no such thing as free energy but in that short section of downhill there when I reset the trip meter it was showing a negative value which I've never seen before in this car. I didn't know it could do that. Absolutely, apparently it can do that. A negative value. And what that essentially means is we were generating electricity for that part of the journey. Appreciate it took us more energy to get up the hill than we put in to the battery coming back down the hill, but it was effectively free energy, which is pretty cool. It means that we are putting more energy back into the battery than we are using. And if we maintain that, for a hundred miles we could effectively I'm pretty sure charge a battery now what would be great to try is on a much longer descent longer consistent descent which you're just really not going to get in the UK because it's hilly at best relatively 
flat as a country. Definitely wouldn't get it in the Netherlands. Uh, what would be really cool is to get this thing to the top of Everest and navigate stroke fall down the side of the mountain there. But, but what I'm saying there is if you get this up to a significant enough hill mountain range that you're descending down, you'd easily get that in Europe, in the Alps somewhere. I'm pretty sure you would be able to charge the battery I'm pretty sure you'd be able to put miles onto that range and I'm pretty sure you could potentially even see an increase in the battery percentage. Has anyone ever done that in a Taycan? Please do comment if you have because that would be very cool but I wanted just to see that in practice, in reality, on a small scale and yeah absolutely we, we could see it there, we could see that negative value, not an insignificant negative value as well, minus 30 kilowatts, uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles. If we maintain that, it would take uh, it would take three hours, I think, by my calculations. If we could maintain that consistently for three hours, we would have a fully charged Taycan battery, I think, if my maths is working correctly there, which is pretty mad, right? Pretty mad. But as I say, there is no such thing as free energy. Uh, the law of energy conservation very much applies here. Uh, energy exists uh, and is converted into different forms and in this case you lose energy through inefficiencies and heat etc all that good stuff so there's always going to be a net loss overall but really cool little experiment to try out it would be great to maybe try this more as I say if you have got better experience of this if you've got access to a bigger hill stroke mountain uh, please do chime in in the comments but good to see I think we'll wrap it up uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Do stay safe, stay well, and I'll try and think of another strange, straight, bizarre experiment to try for the next one. Take care. Bye.